So now as we look at the second half of this lecture, what we've covered thus far is all about the blood and how it functions within the cardiovascular system. What we're now going to be focusing on is the other side, the immune system. The immune system is my absolute favorite part of all of biology, in biology 1 or biology 2. I think it's absolutely fascinating how this system protects us and keeps us alive and really helps us be the human beings that we want to be. So let's begin by looking at the immune system by doing a basic introduction of this wonderful and quite beautiful system. Immune system intro will be the title of our next flowchart. So here, to get a broad overview of what the immune system does, and that's what we'll do in this first flowchart, take a look at figure 43.2. So we're sort of shifting gears, shifting chapters now as well. The immune system has one job, and that is to defend. It is otherwise known as a defense system. And defense is very important when you are a living being. There are dangerous things out there, and those dangerous things want to use your resources and use them to possibly cause harm to you. And therefore, you need to defend yourself against those dangerous things that we're calling right now. And in order to do that, you utilize an entire system of your body devo devoted to that defense. The defense system is basically going to be there in order to protect against what are known as pathogens. And we've mentioned this term before, but now we just want to really highlight what it means to be a pathogen. Protects against pathogens. Pathogens and also um, even other times uh, foreign molecules. Things that are not self, that are not the things that make up you, they are foreign, they are invaders, they are not supposed to be there. We can generally call or a pathogen is a very general term, but it's a good term to use in immunity because it covers a lot. It's simply going to be anything that's cause, that causes a disease. A pathogen is a disease-causing agent. And so, does that sound good or bad? Absolutely bad. That's not something we want. Let's defend ourselves against the things that want to uh, use us and abuse us and possibly even kill us. And how do we do that? We make sure we have a nice defense system of protection against these things that are not supposed to be there. Now, all animals, all animals will have some form of internal defense. Key idea here is that there's going to be internal defense. We've looked at different ways of protection externally, like exoskeletons and stuff, but that's not what we're focusing on here. We're focusing really on internal defense at the more sort of cellular and molecular level. The only thing is, even though all animals have an internal defense, as we'll see when we move forward with this idea of immune system, is that the complexity varies very, very much so. We have very complex immune systems, other organs, not so much. So that's our general idea of what an immune system is utilized for and where it's really utilized internally. And that's why it's sort of combined with this blood lecture because it has a lot to do with this idea of circulation as well, as we will see. Now, generally speaking, the immune system is broken into two main arms. There are two arms of immunity that are worthy of understanding. And we can consider this two types of defense mechanisms, in other words. So let's look at them. Two types of defense mechanisms. This is a very general overview of how these defense mechanisms work. The first one that's going to be inherent to all of us that we have at birth is known as innate immunity. This is something that is given to us at birth that is always going to be there that is basically the first line of defense. The reason why it's called innate immunity is because you are born with it. It is innate to you. And what we notice in innate immunity is the following. This is going to provide a general protection. That's the key word here, a general protection. General is the opposite of specific. Keep that in mind. General protection against those disease-causing agents. What do we call them? Pathogens. So it's a general protection against pathogens. Specifically, the reason why it's general is because it, it can't really, the innate immunity can't really and uh, very much uh, successfully distinguish one pathogen from another. 
It just sees things that look like foreign invaders and acts on them. It doesn't really say, oh, that's a bacteria or, oh, that's the specific E. coli bacteria. None of that. It doesn't distinguish anything. All it does is notice that something's there and says, hey, I'm going to try to get rid of you because you are a pathogen and I don't care what type of pathogen you are. I just want to kill you. I want to get rid of you because this is the host's body, not your body. Okay, so that's the lack of distinguishment that it has. Now, the mechanisms also that work in innate immunity, the reason why they're so general is because the mechanisms always work the same way. We'll see these mechanisms in a little bit more detail as we move forward, but for right now, just note that the mechanisms always work the same way. So basically, they kill or get rid of a pathogen the same way every single time, regardless of who the invader is. That's why it's general, the way that this works. It's regardless of who or what, doesn't matter, the invader is. So it's very much uh, consistent every time some general pathogen enters the body. So it's very non-specific, still very effective, don't get me wrong, we'll see the effectivity as we move forward, but for right now just know that it's general. Now, because it's general, that's actually good too because what it does and has the capability of doing is that it, it deters a wide range of pathogens. Lots of pathogens are immediately destroyed because of our innate immunity. Just because it's general doesn't mean it doesn't work well. It just means that it works a lot and it works very, very uh, large and wide range of pathogens. It deters a wide range of pathogens and there are two basic mechanisms that we're going to be looking at when we look at innate immunity for the rest of this lecture via the following. Either innate immunity will do the first thing that any immune system does is tries to prevent entry. So preventing entry into the body is the first job of any immune system. If you can successfully do that, guess what? You've successfully deterred a pathogen. The pathogen never got a chance to enter, never got a chance to wreak havoc inside, and therefore you've successfully uh, avoided the pathogen. You've successfully killed it or protected the body against it. But let's say sometimes pathogens do enter. A lot of the times they enter. So if you have this system, this part of innate immunity fail, you're gonna have another part of innate immunity try to complete the actions that this part of innate immunity, prevention of entry, did not complete. Otherwise, innate immunity, keyword here is quickly, will quickly try to destroy the pathogen, so it's quickly destroying upon entry. Quick and efficient destroying upon entry. Very non-specific destroying as well. So that's the basic idea of innate immunity. The rest of this lecture will be focused on highlighting how this occurs on more of a molecular and cellular level. Now, the other arm of immunity that's not innate, that's actually known as adaptive immunity. This is something that you are not born with. This is something that you develop. And I think this is a really cool part of immunity because this is something that occurs based off of what you are exposed to. So it's called adaptive immunity, completely separate from the innate immunity, but don't get me wrong, both of these definitely talk to each other as we'll see when we look at the immune system in the next lecture. Adaptive immunity is not the focus of this lecture, but the next lecture, this is otherwise known as acquired immunity as well. So acquired immunity, again, does not mean you were born with it. You have to acquire it, and it's something that happens post-birth as you get exposed to more and more different pathogens. The reason why this is separate from innate immunity is because of the fact that it's very, very, very specific immunity. Kind of the opposite here. It's a specific, it involves specific responses that are directed towards specific, not even pathogens now, even more specific than pathogen, specific responses directed towards what are known as specific, hopefully you can see the theme here, antigens now. I'm not even saying pathogens. Antigens is even more of a less general term than a pathogen, a disease-causing agent. An antigen, which we'll just define here, and that will be the end of this flowchart, an antigen or antigens are just going to be molecules not whole organisms or whole pathogens, not the entire bacteria, let's say, but a specific molecule of the bacteria. Notice the level of specificity here. Understand that it's a lot more specific here. These are specific molecules recognized by immune cells, and these are usually going to be like the B and T cells, immune cells um, as foreign. So key idea here, 
hopefully you've gotten that very clear is that antigens are more specific than pathogens and therefore adaptive immunity will involve specific responses that are not going to be the same every time and against specific antigens that are not going to be general like they can certainly distinguish here between one pathogen and another. So again, the rest of this lecture will be about innate immunity. The next lecture is focusing more so on adaptive immunity. So that's our intro. Take a look at figure 43.2 to get a nice summary of what we've said thus far.